Welcome back to Supercoach Edge. I'm Damon, as always, still uh, still sticking around. And with us, as always, is Liam. How goes it, mate? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I'm just excited to be uh, talking strategy again. We're back. Yeah. Woo! Woo-wee! <laughs> in today's app, we'll be using one of the scariest words in Supercoach, I reckon. It's a word that can strike fear in even the most seasoned of coaches. Yes, Liam, it's the buys. <laughs> Yes, but to uh, counter all that negativity, because we will be using the word buys quite a lot this episode, uh, we'll also chat about something a little bit more fun in trade boosts, which were a yes. <laughs> Is a new... Trade boosts are a new feature, or newish, added yep. into Supercoach in uh, last year and returning again this year. And after using them for the first time in uh, season 2022, we'll be looking at a few more of the tactics and strategies that we can... Now, I guess, think about having used them before and and seeing how how they were used last season. Because I think, I Good think, um, yeah, yeah. I think we all were like, this is what we're going to do with them. And then we just, no one did that. It was all the opposite. Everyone was like, we're going to hold them. We're going to use them over the buys. Yeah. But no, that was not what happened. And you know what? First off, I'm going to add to the excitement. Just, just a little bit. Just a little Ooh. bit, Liam. First off... <laughs> For a hard-earned thirst, it's a big, cold Pepsi Max. <laughs> That's part of the excitement. But if you missed last episode, you won't know that uh, we actually hit the benchmark of 250 subscribers. Well, you, you might know because you might see it on YouTube, but now you know. Mm. So firstly, we want to say a massive thank you um, to those that have, have subscribed so far, but we're also running a giveaway to celebrate. So there we go. Yeah, that's right. And it's a pretty handy prize that you could win if you ask me. Uh, we both, and when I say be both, I mean Damon and I, know how valuable a Supercoach Plus membership is with all of the insights that you'll have right there at your fingertips. And that's the prize. One lucky subscriber will get their hands on a 2023 or 2024, depending on if you've already got one, a Supercoach Plus membership. So how can you win it, Damon? All you have to do to qualify is... Comment below this video on YouTube answering the question as to who you think this year's biggest breakout contender will be. And obviously make sure you subscribe to our channel. And that's it. Easy a peasy lemon squeezy. But for those listening to us on a podcast platform, uh, make sure to head over to YouTube. You know, just just go over there. Uh, make your way there. Subscribe, comment, and you'll be in the running for this awesome prize too. And if you're already commented below the previous episode, you can do so again this app, answering who the best cash cow is, and uh, you'll be given two entries into the random draw. Mm. So that also applies. If you're, if you're stumbling upon this episode and you missed the last episode, mm. you can go back and comment yeah. below that episode as well as this one. So almost going back in time and doing it retrospectively. It's a bit of a back to the future, a bit of DeLorean style type mm. stuff there. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. But yes, for those that uh, have already signed up to Supercoach Plus, as you mentioned, we'll happily cover your subscription for 2024. Uh, it's obviously free to enter, so get involved. So stay tuned as we'll be announcing the winner probably next episode, I reckon. Mm. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon next episode. Yep. So the time to enter is, well, now or maybe last week actually <laughs> last oh. week's episode so uh but it can be this week as well but as as we mentioned this is the halfway point of our milestone so if we can hit 500 subs by round one we'll be doing another giveaway that'll be even just to borrow that uh overused word the last episode even juicier oh we figure we's a little juice if you want to win um i do accept bribes uh <laughs> so just hit me up <laughs> Uh, jokes and you ladies. I, I received one last week. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I do... did it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I haven't. Neither I do take them in the form of extra trades and super coach. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna need them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are gonna need them of all people. No, you won't, because as I said last season, your bad luck has been used. Yeah, you're fine. Know. Clean slate. You're winning know. overall this time. Come on. I know. I've obviously run over the proverbial black cat. 
with a broken mirror. Uh, I don't know, under a ladder in yep. Supercoach terms. I don't know what the Supercoach terms for that are, but that's what I did. But anyway, yep. as always, uh, you keep up to date <laughs> with all things Supercoach on our socials. Uh, on Twitter, you'll find us at, at Supercoach underscore Edge. Damon at, at DamonJ88. Myself at Liam Evans underscore 95. Hit us up uh, there. Uh, if you want to talk anything Supercoach on Facebook, Insta and TikTok, search Supercoach Edge and you will find us there. And we are absolutely loving the interactions and discussions we've been uh, having so far this preseason. And I'm more than happy to have a look at any of your teams. Uh, so just slide in your, into our DMs with those uh, team picks. And uh, we also threw Sean Darcy, a.k.a. Hordor, out of the way as he was holding the door shut to our group league. Holding it oh, shut. Seriously, Hodor, get out of the way. What a pest. What a, he has so many nicknames as well. I love it. Shrek. Hodor. Hodor. The, just the big, so many, big, so many like pop culture references just, just, just to him. Yeah. But, the big lump. You call him yeah. a big lump. <laughs> the big pimple. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably getting a bit too mean. Yeah, probably. But uh yeah. anyway. The, the door uh, the, is now the, flung the... open. We 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 did it. <laughs> Yep. We did it. We were like the the White Walkers coming through. Yeah, breaking down uh, the door. Yeah. To Tore join. Tore to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the door. Oh, the door. This is taking a turn. Yeah, it has, actually. Uh, sorry, sorry yeah. Sean. In any case, mm. for you to, <laughs> to join, <laughs> use the code 249149 and stay tuned as to what the price will be for the coach that is victorious. Yes, but now let's get into it and talk some buys. We'll do it live. Fuck it. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Now, before we kick off on the buys, let's just get across, you know, some of the some of the refreshers for season 2023 of when the buys actually are. So there will be four buy rounds this season across rounds 20, uh, sorry, crowns, across rounds 12, 13, 14, and 15. In round 12, there are four teams with the buy, Brisbane, Fremantle, St. Kilda, and Sydney. In round 13, uh, it's just the two with Geelong and Gold Coast, which is nice. Round 14, it gets a little more hairy with uh, Adelaide, Collingwood, Essendon, Hawthorne, Melbourne, and West Coast having their bye. And round 15 uh, with Carlton, North Melbourne, Port, Richmond, Western Bulldogs, and GWS rounding it out. Let's get into the uh, the all-important rules. Mm. Rules. Forget about the badge. When do we get the freaking guns? Hey, I told you, you don't get your gun until you tell me your name. I've had it up to here with you, rules. <laughs> oh, classic Simpsons moment. One of my favorites. I don't even really know who that character is. It's like Mar- it's the episode where Marge yeah. is the the like, cop going through the police academy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I've had it up to here with your rules. <laughs> <laughs> when do we get the guns? And he just like walks off. <laughs> oh, classic. Anyway, <laughs> onto the supercoach rules across these rounds. <laughs> Each round, your score will be made up of your best 18 players as opposed to the uh, the normal full field of players. This will help account for those players that obviously miss due to their buy. You'll also have three trades each round rather than the usual two from week to week up your sleeve to help you navigate the buys. And one thing to factor in here is if you have more than 18 players, only your best 18 scores will count. So how do we tackle the buys, Lou? It's an age old question. I ask every year. How do I, how do I tackle the buys? <laughs> how do I'm normally I? asking that after round 14. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was I supposed to tackle yeah, the buys? Pretty much. That's well, the question I ask. Uh, yeah. To prevent us being in that situation that you're normally in, Liam. You know, even though it is the age old question that super coaches mm. ask, some people are very buy conscious <laughs> when building their team. Others, like yourself, Liam, and probably me to an extent as well, are less so and have a devil may care attitude until it's too late, until it's all too late. Yeah, you're like, I what definitely... went wrong? Oh, I'll, you're like, I'll take note of it next season. Mm, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Every, every year I think, all right, I'll, I'll think about it in preseason and then I just yep. don't. I just, yeah. I just go, this, nah, is this, episode's, this is what this episode's for, Liam. It's not just for the, it's the, an intervention the good people. For Liam. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, you don't realise, but it's an intervention for you. <laughs> oh, I probably need it, let's be honest. Depending on whether you're playing for league or for overall ranking, it can change the tactics you need to implement during the buys. If you are playing for league wins, and I often do this when I think about the leagues, 
um, or when I was focusing more on league wins as opposed to overall ranking, um, I kind of would choose, I'd look at my Mac matchups, I'd choose from them and decide to focus on probably aiming to win when there was three buys, aiming to win two of the buys and essentially throwing the third one, just not stop being as concerned by it. Because if I could come out of the buys with a two, three, two out of three win rate, I'd be pretty happy. Mm. That is noting as well, though, that the round 13 buy will not affect most players too greatly, I don't think, because it's only two teams having their buy. Um, and with the best 18, it's really it'll be quite easy to cover. So I really think just on that note, you're probably only really looking at two buys this season. Uh, sorry, three buys this season as opposed to four. But we've just got to factor in that there's the best 18. So that's one thing just to consider, I guess. Yep. Uh, but if you are playing for overall, you want to maximize the players you have each round to help you catapult your way up the rankings as other coaches tend to struggle. So I often find that buys can be sort of the making make or break point as well. If you mm. structure yourself well for buys, you can really gather momentum and overtake people, especially those that might have just gone ham. They've made all these trades. They've, they've made up lots of points, made up lots of ground, but they haven't considered the buys and then they'll fall away. Um, so you want need to make sure you have that even spread of players across the four buys, um, especially so you can dodge those potential donuts. Love it. Now, in terms of, uh, I guess, talking about the structure of your side with the buys in mind, you can consider that from you know this point with a big focus on the keepers you're selecting and consider the primos you've got across each line and how that will affect your playing players across the buys. So minimize damage by spreading players across the buys. And if you're tossing up between two players and you're not sure who to go for, maybe use the buys as a bit of a deciding mm. factor. So check what buy they have and use that to help differentiate as to who is best to bring into your side uh, with a better balance for buys. Because um, so, it, yeah. it may help. Like there's so many primos out there that, you know, you're splitting hairs and they'll both score quite well across the course of the year. Um and maybe like neck and neck and they may not elevate their ceiling and just, just be constant. But yeah, the, the one thing to keep in mind is that you'll be kicking yourself if you get to the buyers and you're like, oh, I'm facing a donut, but I could have prevented it by going for the other primo that scored just as well, mm. but will give you the leg up over other people that are in that exact scenario of being like, oh, okay, well, I'm stuffed and I'm forced to use a trade, um, especially if, if their bench isn't, isn't good enough for cover. So with this in mind, Geelong and Gold Coast players are instantly more attractive as they will play across the three weeks of the buys that are harder to cover. So Tom Stewart, the running man, Tuk Tuk Miller, mm. and even Jack Jack Bowes and Noah Anderson even mm. will be more popular picks as a result because it will, will be easy to cover their round 13 buy. Um, you know, that's only, what's that? One, two, if you've got all those players, one, two, three, four players you'd need to cover in that round. And then looking across the other rounds, you've got those players available, those four players available. So try and, I mean, don't don't go all out and no. stuff up the structure. Yeah, for the sake uh, of that. Yeah, for the sake of that. But it's it's a nice thing to have. Like if you're thinking, oh, should I go for a Jack Bowes or an Elliot Yeo, for example, and money isn't really a factor, maybe look at that. Um, if it does help help you out, I just, you know, throwing a couple of names out there. Yeah. Or um, even a Tom Stewart versus like a Jordan Dawson or yep. Sam Doherty, maybe. Um, you might say, okay, they're probably gonna have similar. If you think they're gonna have similar output, they're roughly the same price off memory, um, without looking at it. Uh yep. you might say, Oh, well, Tom Stewart's gonna cover my buys better. So that that makes sense. Yeah. And the one strategy uh, I guess that's been constant across the years in sort of navigating the buys is upgrading across the buys and how best mm. to do it. So, you know, it might mean that you choose players in your starting team who have later buys and you mm. look to upgrade to primos and downgrade to rookies who have the earlier buys after they've had their buy. Um, yeah. So if that makes sense. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. So you want to focus on players. So you probably want to start players who have those later buys um, yep. because you know that, like that that's going to happen, but it's easier to upgrade to a player. Like I think who's got an early buy, uh, Sydney, like Callum Mills, for instance, if he holds his price consistently across the year, or even if you consider it might drop off, I don't know, whatever you think, if you trade him in after his buy, 
Like it's worth waiting until then to mm-hmm. trade him in or not starting him, then trading him in and then he'll cover the rest of the buys. Uh, yeah. But you might be able to upgrade a player, I don't know, who's going to be going into their buy around then. Um, yep. Like, a, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but yeah. It's yeah, it's it's literally the whole premise is it's going to help maximize the points you're going to get from those players. So like yeah. using Mills for exa- as an example, it'd be silly to bring him in before because he's got the first buy, doesn't he? He's got the first buy off memory, yeah. Yep. Um, so it'd be silly to to bring him in if you can afford to to go for someone else and maybe go for Mills later on. Um, bring him in that is before he's had his buy because he's going to leave you a man down. Um, and you're going to have to rely on your, your bench cover. So, you know, which is a rookie or a whatever that isn't going to have the same output yeah. as a mill. So maybe, maybe go for someone else who's a primo that. Yeah. And I guess the later buys, it's kind of, it's, it's almost like a moot point with them. So like a Doherty, for instance, he's going to miss later. So it's harder to bring him in after you have to either bring him in after his buy, which is round 14. So you bring him in around 15, um, which is probably part of the issue. So you kind of, it's okay to hold, to have him in earlier. So maybe waiting your side a little bit more to later buys, if that makes sense, having a spread, yep. but you can also make sure you've got that waiting across. If you're tossing up between players, you might consider an earlier buy um, as someone that you can upgrade to early on or late yep. in their buys. Sorry. Yeah. And you've, you've written here uh, just an example quickly on the run sheet here, Liam, about Brayshaw um, trading him in, for example, after his round 12 buy. So mm. bringing him in in round 13, which will help obviously maximize your points as he covers for others who will miss in, you know, especially around 14 and 15 yeah. um, across those buys, the main buys. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's inevitable. You're going to start upgrading before the buys anyway, but just keep it in mind in terms of it'll get to a point where it'll start to become a little bit prickly where there's always a case where one of the buy weeks in the years gone by where it's been the three bye weeks Mm -hmm. where at least one of those bye weeks you're going to be hard hard hit like really really hit really hard by the buy so just keep it in mind every time you do a trade or trade in or trade up to a premium flick across to your buy selector and just see how your team is structured and just keep it in mind because you don't let it get to a stage where you're going to have to use you know three trades you're forced to use three trades the week of a bye week where you're going to be lacking three players, for example, like and you're forced to bring in extra players um, and bring in primos that you don't want just to cover a zero type, for example. So yeah, mm-hmm. just keep it in mind. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think one thing that's beneficial as well with Geelong and Gold Coast having that second buy alone, it's going to give us a little bit of cover for um, the round the first buy, I think the first buy is always the awkward one where you're like, I don't want to trade anyone in because they're all going to miss in a yeah. in, in subsequent weeks. And yes, Geelong's going to miss or Gold Coast going to miss the next week, but it's going to be easy to cover them. So it's yeah. almost like you could upgrade to them. No, they're going to miss the next week. That's okay. It is what it is. But then they're going to be like, it, it's just, it's, it's probably the one benefit of that or one of the benefits of that is that with if four buy rounds is that, and one of them only having two is that you are going to be able to sort of structure the upgrades through the buys a little bit easier. Mm. Cause I always find that the first buy round sucks. Cause you're always like, yeah. I don't want to upgrade to anyone because they're just going to miss next week or the week after. Um, so I guess I know it's going to happen with Geelong, but just because Geelong and Gold Coast, sorry, are going to um, be easy to cover it. It kind of works better. And then on that, obviously you want to come out of the buys with a full primo side, basically. Um, so you're upgrading through them. You get the three, you get the three trades. And obviously you're just going to be careful when you're considering who you're going to upgrade to, uh, because you obviously, as we said, don't want to trade in a player who's going to miss, but I mean, you can do that. Just make sure you're not doing it and you're going to not be able to cover them basically <clears throat> and assess. Maybe it might be a case of you have to wait a week to get a player, um, player in, but sometimes it's hard because you are, they're, they're going to, you know, go up in price quite a lot um, or or you're not going to get the cheapest price. So it's, it's, it's always weighing up uh, everything, I guess. Mm. Um, at the end of the day though, there's again, I feel like we're going to say this a lot. There's a lot of ways to play the buys. So there's no best strategy, no worst strategy. And as we all know, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So no matter whether you're super prepared or you haven't considered the buys at all until you enter round 12, 
anything could happen. You could you could have the best laid plans, and then you have injuries that mean that you you know have to trade in players. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I think if you look to minimize the damage early on, you're always going to be setting yourself in the best, um, the best coming into the buys. If you just don't consider them at all, you're probably going to going to walk in a little bit uncomfortably and come out the other side probably not 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 too happy with how you've gone. Yep. No, exactly right. And just going back to that, because we obviously have 30 players to choose from in our team, obviously starting 22, but best 18 yeah. across the bye weeks. So just looking as an example, like we gave with the Geelong and Gold Coast week, uh, that bye round, if you had Stewart, if you had Miller, Bowes and Anderson, that's four players missing from your best 22. You've still got 18. Yeah. So that's the benefit that we're sp- speaking about with that week, with having... You know, you're not you're not hit at all virtually. Like mm. you'd be hard pressed. Like you'd be struggling massively if you can't can't. If you can't feel eighteen, you've done 18. something. Wrong. And you've got and you got yeah, and you've got that many. You could probably even go more. Like if you wanted to, um, with other Geelong and Gold Coast players. But yeah, it's just an interesting sort of way. Like there's a bit of a, a an added tactic to it almost mm. uh, with that extra bye week because it isn't really a bye week uh, if you don't treat it as such and. Uh, it could be a way around the other three bye weeks. Um, but just also harping back to that um, uh, and probably the, speaking to the, the benefit of the Supercoach Plus, which is what we're, we're doing as part of our giveaway. A lot of people out there be like, oh, who needs that? But it's actually really beneficial because you can see the breakdown mm, of the how filters. the buys. Yeah, you can filter your team according to the bye weeks and it grays out the players that aren't available in certain bye weeks. So it just, it makes it so much easier. You don't have to use pen and paper to, to write down all the players' names mm. and work out, cross-check who's available, who isn't. Um, so that there is a benefit there. We should probably get a kickback from the Supercoach uh, official crew. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> but so. But no, that's, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the uh, benefits of Supercoach Plus. And um, I mean, it's inevitable as well. Like there's only so much you can plan when it comes yeah. to buys. Like inevitably, you're going to have injuries. You're going to have rookies, especially that are dropped and so on and so forth. Um, so and there's going to be players that you can't, like you can't not get because their yep. their price is just too juicy. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that that's what's going to happen. It's there's injuries, as you said, everything. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to weigh it up. Like those those primos as well. Like if it's a knock on wood, it doesn't happen because I'll likely be starting. But like Clary Oliver, if he was available at like five fifty k or something, for example, and you don't yeah. have him, and he was bound to go up. If you're training him in the week before his bye week. Um, and he's he's bound to go up, you know, fifty k for example. You'd bring him in, even though he's he's, he's about yeah. to have his bye week. Um, so you've you've got to sort of weigh it up as the pros and cons because there's no hard and fast way to go about it. It comes down to team structure um, and who you've got available and if you can how best you can navigate. Really, um, I think last season, I think I came through unscathed from memory for the first time in a while where I didn't mm. cop a donut um, in any of the weeks. Because, yeah, it's inevitable. Yeah. There's only so much you can plan for where it's just injuries, players dropped, all that sort of stuff. So it's good, just good fun. Yeah, and I think one thing to remember is it affects everyone generally relatively similarly. Like mm. primos tend to be relatively consistent across teams. So everyone kind of gets hit sim- like in a similar way. Generally, the more super code relevant teams, you know, they're all – it's just consistent. So I think we – I can't remember which year it was, which round it was last year, but there was one that everyone was dreading um, because it was going to hit everyone pretty hard. So it's kind of like everyone's in the same boat to an extent, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So it kind of evens itself out. Exactly. Well, uh, that's all things by Slam. Thankfully, you can just throw that over our shoulder, just screw yeah, it up. Thank and throw you. It yeah, that's it. Don't think about it again until round exactly. 12. <laughs> but no, seriously, keep it in mind when you're structuring your team, but more so in season uh, as you're yeah. bringing primos in and stuff. That's probably where it's just as important, if not more important, because you kind of lose track of once you're bringing players in, you don't know what bye weeks they have until you go to the Supercoach Plus and do the breakdown. You're mm. like, <gasps> I've got two players playing that week, <laughs> which is, I know what's happened to you, Liam. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But now let's jump into the more exciting topic of trade boost. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! So as a bit of a refresher, trade boosts were introduced into the super coach arsenal in 2022, primarily as a way to help cover for the inevitable health and safety protocols that came with COVID. 
So you'll have five trade boosts to use across the season, which gives you the ability to use an extra trade in any round, giving you three trades in a normal round or four trades across the buys. So they aren't extra trades per se. So they are mm. borrowed from your allocated sum of 36, but they do give you the, the ability to use that extra trade. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a tactic to, uh, to keep in mind. So Liam, shall we delve in a little further? Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's touch on it a bit more. So this is obviously only the second year as we've, we've alluded to um, of the trade boost. So the tactic is still, I think being explored and seeing how we can exploit it best. I think, um, we'll probably touch on a few of the tactics that we've seen last year. Um, so let's t- chat about them and uh, look at how we could potentially use them across the season in 2023. So one strategy um, with the boosts, and I think this was one that a lot of people, I think caught people unawares last year, was that a few, a lot of people used them earlier in the season so they could help fast track completing their side. Um, and I think this was something that I don't think we all sort of thought about yeah. initially. Uh, so they potentially were able to even finish their sides sort of heading into the buys as opposed to coming out of the buys. So the way you can do this is obviously by using the extra trade to help you upgrade quicker, either with a, you know, a two down one up. So cashing in two maxed out rookies and upgrading to a primo or, you know, using a mid pricer um, and upgrading them to a primo, um, and potentially downgrading another rookie to bank it, uh, make some more cash. Um, or if you've got the cash, the, the one that I always love is the two up and the one down, uh, mm-hmm. Because it just feels so much nicer. This obviously helps to fast track you to a full primo side. But in keeping that in mind, you're going to be burning through trades a hell of a lot faster, yeah. um, which is good and bad that comes with that, I guess. And yeah. it could be at your detriment by the season's end, but it could also be absolutely fine. Um, with that being said, if most players do take this stance and do decide to upgrade quicker, you're going to be left in their wake and maybe too far behind if you don't follow on with the with the trend of using using your boosts to to upgrade quicker. So it's kind of it's it's a it can be a double edged sword, I guess. But if you're left behind and there's not the injuries that affect these players, then you're just yeah. you, you're going to be behind for the whole way. I think that was that was kind of where I was at. I thought I was being smart in. Yeah. For the first time ever, I reckon, because my team name is DJ Trade a lot because I do <laughs> trade a lot. And I thought, oh, yeah, being smart and like just hold trades. And it kind of, I was, I was playing catch up. So I think that kind of ties in with one you just mentioned there, that, that mm. a bit of, a bit of that tactic there. But one which I think upon reflection is a, is a good one is to use, you know, a trade boost in the first week or two to help with rookie and mid price yeah. corrections. And surprisingly, I've actually heard, I think it was when JP, last year's winner, he was on the official uh, AFL KFC Supercoach podcast. And he mentioned that he actually used one of the boosts in round, like after round one. And he used it on bringing Crips in. So that's obviously before price corrections. Mm. So yeah, I mean, that kind of ties in that point there. Like the extra trade, you could potentially wait an extra week before you know players on the bubble because prices haven't changed you know and it gives you a better chance to assess your options and an extra week of data but i guess in jp's case using you could even use it an earlier example, yeah yeah he, he brought him in when a lot of people would have waited you know after round two he waited he waited until after round one and he's like no nope, that's it i'm bringing him in so that was a risk to do that because it could have potentially just been a burn of an uh, mm. of a trade boost and crips may not have had the season that he did um, so it was a risk that he took there, but it was to his advantage because he jumped on him. He got one of Cripps's scores a week earlier than what the masses did, if you know what I mean. Exactly. So they brought him yeah. in a week later and they missed out. I don't know what he scored in round two, um, but whatever it was, everyone yeah. else missed out on that. So that's sort of something to keep in mind and weigh up. Um, but I think I'm still a fan of doing it like, bring in players before the price change. And I think I only used one trade boost in round three, but now, and having a listen to one of um, Moriera's Magic's podcasts recently, he said that he used all trade boosts in every single early round Mm. to get a jump on the competition. That was kind of his thinking. So he used one, you know, one week, two weeks, third, third round, fourth round, and just use three three trades every single week to firstly correct his team, but also 
I guess like corrections, but it, it got to a stage there where he's bringing in, because a lot of people I think do rookie corrections first and foremost. Primos, you kind of, you got to have faith in them to an extent. You've, you've, you've brought them, you've started with them. You want to back them in. Yeah, um, you've done the research. There's a reason the why you brought them in. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like super aggressive and he said, I think he said he, he held maybe one of the trade boost lead up until the buys, but across the buy period, he didn't, he didn't have any left. So that was like, yeah, the ultra aggressive approach to things. Mm. And I think Abdul might've been doing something similar. So yeah, there is memory, enough yeah. evidence there to say that um, it does work going ultra yeah. aggressive. But you still yeah. need to make the right moves. That's the that's the, the clincher, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, looking at, I just got Cripps' scores up. So he scored 134 in round one. He then played Geelong in round two and scored a 148. So, you know, JP's really banked 148 extra points over people that yeah. brought him in the next round. So after round two, um, where he scored 122. So he's, you know, so he's, they've seen the 148. They've seen the 134, the 148, they brought him in. JP seen the 134, then he's used the trade boost, brought him in, got a 148, which has given him a bit of a head start over over others. Mm. And then um and then others have brought uh Crips in after that. So there is there is merit. I, I see I see that there. Hang on, sorry, I've stuffed that up. Okay. I was looking at his projections. Sorry. Ah. Uh. But my point still stands pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He played Richmond in round one, which scored a 132. Uh, JP's brought him in with his trade boost. He then scored a 162 the next round. So um, he, and then everyone's brought him in and then the, he's played Hawthorne in round three for a 119. So I think that's, that the point still stands is that he's, he's gone off his chops in round two, got his, JP's benefited from that because he's got an extra 162 points um, on others or whatever whoever they didn't have in place of him, but he's got those extra points. Just improved, obviously, his scoring. So it's it's it, that's the benefit of him. It's got that compounding effect, I guess. Yeah. I think Mario's Magic was was talking about <clears throat> with regards to using pretty much all of his five trade boosts up until, what, round six or whatever it is. And I think one of those players was um, he had, uh, what's his name, Jake Bowie? Mm. David Bowie from, uh, from Melbourne. And he went up, what was it, something crazy across – three he had three price cycles three price rises yeah may have made about 100k or something and then traded him out so i think he used one of those on him as well as like so i think he, he did like him downgraded him downgraded another player and then upgraded with his third trade so brought in a primo way earlier than what the rest of the competition did so if that happens again if we have another boom rookie I'd seriously consider it, I think, in, in my case anyway. Yeah. That's kind of one of my key learnings anyway with the trade yeah. boosts is leverage off them a bit better uh, than what I did last season where I was being a little bit too gun shy, thinking, oh, yeah, I'll be smart. Everyone else is going to run out of trades. Um, but I wasn't hit with as many injuries as what I thought it would be, <laughs> unlike you, Liam. Um, mm. So you would have been in the shit even more, I think, if you uh, yeah, if if I went, you hard. <laughs> went super hard. So that's the other risk is like, risk it for the biscuit um you're counting on you not getting and if you get injuries it's out of your control anyway like what can you do you're almost at yeah, a point there you where you're playing catch up you can't you can't i don't think you can play the game thinking that way you can't play the game holding back too much and sorry saving all of your trades for for uh injuries because you're just going to not make any uh moves and on jake bowie i think you're right he scored he went up 100k in by round four yeah. At the end of round four, he'd already gone up by 100K. And I think on that, maybe as we've touched on, that the idea of shorting a player with your trade boost, you can really do that. You could you could bank on a player that might go up really quickly um, in price, um, trade them in with your trade boost in round two, get their scores. If you think they're going to fall off a cliff, make their cash, then just move them on. Yep. Like it. So yeah, I like think it's it. an interesting strategy, but one that I think will differentiate some players in, in 2023 as well. But uh, now I think we have to move on and chat briefly about the other key factor I think that we have to keep in the back of our minds as a new alteration to the 2023 season. Not so much from a super coach controlled perspective, mm. but uh, it's a bit of a negative, much like the buyers, and it is the return of the sub. Mm. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. 
Wait, 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 wait. So this season, clubs are allowed to make a substitute at any stage of the game for any reason with the AFL abolishing the, uh, I guess, the medical sub. So, you know, clubs are only allowed, even though I kind of, I think part of this reason was the AFL knew that clubs were taking the piss and subbing players that weren't technically injured, but they're like, oh, they've got a niggle. And it's like, well, you don't need to provide any paperwork or they can just doctor that and be like, oh yeah, someone had like hammy tightness and get away with it. So the mm-hmm. AFL's like, you know what? Stuff it. We're just going back to just normal sub. So as you mentioned, Wallace, this is something obviously out of our control as super coaches. We can play devil's advocate as to how sides could use this. Mm. And I guess the first use for teams, and this is this is purely speculative. Like we've got to, you've got to like we've got to realize that it's not the same as last year, um, and we are looking at it um, sort of without. I know there was a sub rule in the past, but I think you kind of have to ignore that to an extent, or not ignore it, but just consider that it it's a different game at this stage. Um, yep. So I guess the first use is for teams uh, who use, you know, the two Ruckman, they have the, the dual Ruckman uh, in their sides. Uh, and given the need for leg speed, especially late in the game, uh, one of the two Rucks are probably an obvious substitute um, candidate if 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 the side's down or if, if, it's, if the game's in the balance. Mm, yeah, I totally agree. Um, I guess the second use is, mm. is one that's dreaded for all of us super coaches mm. because it involves first-year rookies. And, and given they lack the match conditioning of more established players. Clubs may choose to substitute first year rookies out of the game as their fitness wanes or alternatively, it wouldn't surprise to see first year players named just as the sub um, Mm. and only come into the game late. So this will of course impact the cash generation side of things, but like we've been saying, it's largely out of our control. Um, It's just going to be be a real kick in the dick. I think once we like, especially with those cash cows and rookies and whatnot, like first year rookies, um, and probably pays into what we were saying in the last episode. Yeah, I about going to say that. Yeah, about those um, Steve Bashimis. <laughs> if you have no idea what we're talking about, have a look at the last episode. It's, it's literally what would be mid, mid-price mid players that are priced as rookies. So your Josh Bruce's, your, your Ben Kings, all those guys that are priced mm. 210 and below. Um, so at least they come with a bit of security, you know their best 22, and they're not going to you know, lose their spot, they're not going to be subbed out of the game, you'd think, unless there's an injury or something, but they're not going to be subbed out of their game before a rookie because of, of, Mm -hmm. you know, match fitness. Like there's a lot of players that are battling with it. Like Tom Green, I think he may have been actually one of the guys, if this was in effect last season, he would have been subbed out of the game because as his season drew on, his time on ground was going less and less and less and less. And they weren't able to sub him because the rule wasn't in effect. And, his output dropped. So it's a way of managing and controlling the, the fitness of, of players and, um, and their load, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So I think, yeah, that that's almost an argument again for the Steve Buscemi's. Um, <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm loving this analogy. I think it, <laughs> I think it's another argument for them. I think we, if you go back and listen to the last episode, you'll hear us talk about it um, a little bit and, and our thoughts. But I think again, it's just, it's a nice reason why we probably need to be a little bit more careful of the rookies, the rookie rookies, the actual proper first year rookies, first year rookies yeah. as opposed to these rookie priced mid prices. I want to say, call them. How do you do fellow kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think, I think it's actually an interesting strategy and it's something that we have to consider with the sub. So it'll be, it will be, I think it's gonna be a heartbreaking thing as well. Hopefully we're all in it together. That's, yep. that's all I have to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I guess uh, the third sort of thing to consider with the sub is in terms of veterans, veterans, especially those with long-term injuries being potentially managed late in games, especially if their side has the win already sewn up or if the, you know, the results. Beyond doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So Fife is probably one key example here. Uh, well, there's no doubt that he would be somewhat of a barometer for Frio if they already have have the win. Um, would you risk him copying an injury, especially knowing his injury history? Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if his this extends as well to some of the top liners of any given side being wrapped in cotton wool as if they cop a slight niggle during the game, or if there's you know an issue with them, you know if they're playing through some soreness or something. Um, you might see them, yeah, given the red vest. Do they have to wear the vest? This year? No, no. I think they've uh, they've abolished the vest now. Damn. Yep. So that, that, that part, part of the game is is done. What's um, the point? 
What's Maybe we bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sub myself out every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm having a shit one. I'm going to sub myself out. Uh, classic. Well, uh, Liam, that rounds us out for the uh, the second entry of our uh, strategy series. And hopefully it's given uh, everyone a bit of food for thought on the buys, trade boosts, and uh, that's, uh, that's sub. But Liam, what do we have on the horizon for our next strategy episode? Mm, next episode, I think we'll chat a little bit about all things DPP. Uh, I think we'll chat a little bit why they're important, how you can utilize them and uh, what mid-season DPP changes might mean for your strategy going forward. Very nice. As always, if you're keen to join the discussion, we encourage you to do so by commenting below this video. If you're watching us on YouTube and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And alternatively, uh, you can shoot us your comments and questions via on uh, Twitter Oh, yes. You can uh, shoot us a question at, at supercoach underscore edge. Uh, Damon at, at DamonJ88. Myself at, at Liam Evans underscore 95. Facebook, Insta, and TikTok. Search Supercoach Edge and you'll find us there. And uh, don't forget to get involved in the random subscriber draw by commenting below this video who your predicted breakout player is and subscribe if you haven't already to make sure you're fully eligible. Yep, that's it. Tick, tick, tick. Do it again and um, jump back to the previous episode. You can comment on that. Um, but next week is when the uh, when the juice is squeezed. Just just bring in that analogy again uh, for the lucky lucky person that uh, receives a subscription to Supercoach Plus. And like as we spoke about with the buyers, you'll be able to just go through, do your homework. Uh, not in season scrambling and you've got papers all over your desk and like mm. me and I'm just like, oh, you know what? Throw up my hands in the air and stuff it. It is what it is. Maybe we should offer them, you know, in the Simpsons where they, um, Bart gets to choose between an elephant or whatever, like $10,000. <laughs> and he's like, I want my elephant. And they're like, the elephant's the gag prize. We should be like, you yeah. can get a glass of orange juice or your <laughs> super coach <laughs> plus <laughs> subscription. <laughs> uh, and then we have like, uh, from that episode, I just always remember like the bird that's like cleaning the elephant yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Homer's got one on his head. It's like, Homer, what's the bird again? He's cleaning me. Mmm, elephant fresh. <laughs> <laughs> or we can give away a bird that cleans you, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the bird that cleans you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer that. Imagine that, doing an episode of that every every week. <laughs> bird on the head. Who's got the bird on the head that, that week? Anyway, until next week, we'll uh, catch you at the same time as we say, same place. See you then. See you guys.